This was the second piece of cyberpunk artwork I did back in 2019, and it was a sick piece of art in general that year. What I'm trying to say is that I managed to achieve this quite early on when I was doing digital art, and you could too. Now as a disclaimer, this is not a comprehensive tutorial, it's not going to cover everything, but I think if you're starting out, this will be valuable for you as a brief walkthrough, a general overview and guide of the processes and steps that I take into creating this piece. Bearing in mind, this is a piece I've done a few years ago, so there's a lot of things that I would do differently now and a lot of things that I could improve on. But if you have just started out, I think this is great for you because it will show you just how much you can achieve if you just started. The first step for me is always going to be the research. So we're talking your references here. So you open up Pinterest, create some boards, find out and look up elements of what you want in your piece. And if you don't know exactly what you're looking for for this piece right now, but you know it's about cyberpunk, then this is the best time to do that research. So look up these images, find similar work, get inspired. And when you're doing your research, you should be looking at things like cyberpunk architecture, uh, neon signs, type of fashion, the weapons, the armor, type of characters you find in these sorts of genres, biomechanical limbs, all these type of things. You'd also want to think about what type of characters you want in this piece. Ideally, by this point, you've already designed, let's say, your main character, uh, but also it's not unreasonable to do it as you progress. I've done it before, um, but it just streams the process a lot more if you've already known what they're going to look like. And also a good thing to do is to look up real world examples for your characters. So I'm talking the type of clothes, the straps, the pouches, the weapons, the holsters, armor, all that sort of stuff. If you can find something in real life, like a photo, and then implement it into your design, it's going to look so much more realistic and convincing. And once you've done all of that research, you're now much better positioned to confidently create this piece of artwork by understanding what's the look, feel and vibe of it's going to be. Another important step is understanding the narrative of your piece. What's the story you're trying to tell here? What's happening in this piece? Think of it like storyboarding or concept art. An example could be that there's a bounty on your character, they're in the middle of being attacked by a bunch of mercenaries. Think about things like whether it's taking place across rooftops, is it in a crowded area? What's the weather like? Is it during the day or the night? Knowing all of this helps you understand what makes sense to go in your piece and understanding the narrative and story of it gives it much more intent and it just makes the process so much easier. Another important step is understanding the pose you want to give your characters. This is so important because it defines this piece. So if it's an action scene, what are they doing in this scene that's going to make it visually striking and most appropriate to this piece you're creating? What I do here is look up dynamic poses for my characters. And a good starting point for me has always been games and anime because in both of these, every movement they create is always exaggerated, full of intent and purpose, and it gives your piece all of those things. So definitely look those up. Now onto the design of my character Cerulean. I've given her coloured hair because I wanted something that really speaks loudly, not only just as a visually striking element of this piece, but for her character, her personality, and also resonating with the colour of her clothes and her weapons. And also I think it speaks very well with the genre of cyberpunk. For her weapons, I gave her an electric katana because I love bringing these sort of Japanese elements into these designs. I gave her a wrist guard with a blade attached to it, along with an energy shield of black and black panther. And when you're designing your character's weapons, you can literally do anything you want. You can give them biomechanical limbs that turn into weapons. You can give them, you know, futuristic prosthetics, literally anything you want. And for her fashion and armor, I gave her a combination of the two. So something quite casual and timeless, along with the right kind of, you know, genre appropriate accessories like straps, pouches, and a bit of tech. And uh, anything that looks tactical is always a good shout. The next important step is understanding the composition of your piece. What's the visual hierarchy of the artwork you're creating here? Where are characters going to go? Where buildings are going to be? What's the camera angle going to be like? All of these kind of things. You can start off with a rough sketch of approximately where you want things to go. But of course, if you're really good with perspective and you're really good at drawing things like this by hand, then please do this entire piece by hand. You know, the drawing, the painting, all of it. It's really good practice and it's amazing if you can. But remember, it is called digital art for a reason. So if you're like me, I want to implement technology to my advantage as much as I can to streamline the process and knowing that being an artist is already difficult enough, if there's little things like tools and presets and stuff that help make our lives a bit easier, then great, let's use them. And this can be as simple as something like adding a texture for clothes so you don't have to go through the painstaking process of drawing every pattern individually, or even rendering something in 3D and implementing that into your piece. So obviously there's a lot of different ways you can achieve this. What I did here was model the background in 3D. 
You can also do things like take a photo uh, of let's say Manhattan and then better yet, you know, transform that into a futuristic city by collaging things together. That's also an option. And remember, there's nothing wrong with combining different mediums to create your art. What I did here was take inspiration from the kind of architecture you find in Hong Kong, minus all the AC units. Here I modelled it in 3D, all of the shop fronts, the doors, windows, uh, the sky bridges, the signage, the roads, all that sort of stuff. Nothing overly detailed, but just enough for me to work on when I paint over it. Another important aspect of composition is the camera angle of your piece. This can be pretty much whatever you want, but it needs to be something that's most appropriate to your piece, the scene and the kind of feel and vibe that you're depicting here. You could even think about whether the camera should be level or tilted. And when you're looking for examples for me, another go-to is looking at how they do it in games and anime, because again, those kind of shots, movements and composition they have there is full of intent. And also some shots are quite difficult to achieve practically. So that's why I feel like anything done with CG or any kind of animation or computer-based design is always a go-to approach for this sort of thing. For my piece specifically, I wanted the focus to be on Cerulean, showing how powerful she is. So she's up high, she's about to land an attack and it looks like you're next. If you are thinking about making some of your artwork in 3D, then the important takeaway here is the importance of making things to scale. Modeling things to scale is so important and this is coming from someone with an architecture background because by making it look like it's practical makes you understand and gives you a point of reference that yes, this piece, even though it's science fiction, can actually work in real life and it makes it so much more convincing. That's the importance of it. For example, if you've ever seen like an indie game or watched an indie game where the staircases are blatantly way too tall, you have to jump in order to get up that staircase, they don't understand scale and they model that all wrong. So make sure you do that. And of course, I'm not saying you can't do something fantastical or really cool. Of course, you can have floating staircases, things on thrusters or whatever, but as long as it looks like it works, is at the right kind of height, then yeah, then that's great. And once I've decided on the composition, the perspective and camera angle for this piece, I then just make it so that it's just the lines and export it as an image file. From there, I import it into Photoshop or whichever software you're comfortable with using, and then I start painting. Another important part of the process is understanding the lighting for your piece. And lighting for cyberpunk artwork is always crucial to get right. At this stage, even before you start painting, you really should be thinking about things like where your light source is coming from, how many there are, what colors there'll be, whether any of it's going to be emitting from your character or their weapons. All of this is going to influence the overall intensity and mood of your piece. And now onto the painting. Here I'd be focusing on the things like making the place look alive and lived in, imply that people come and go from these buildings, people use these spaces, have certain lights on, some of them off, have some shops open, some shops close. Think about all these sort of things. Again, think about the narrative of your piece, the world you're trying to create. And be playful with the technology and the signage. You know, have some neon signs for holograms, bathe the street in light where it's appropriate, and don't be afraid to make certain places dark because the darkness makes the light so much more vibrant. And also consider the level of detail you want to be painting for certain parts of this piece because you know things further away less detail and only do things that imply that certain effects are being implemented here certain textures are implied here and things closer obviously more detail and you know concentrate on things where you want people to focus on another important aspect is to make sure that your characters are actually being affected by the lighting in that area that looks like they are actually in that space and are being impacted by their surroundings if i was to do this piece again there'd be so many things that i would change but for instance for lighting i'd a try not to be afraid to go a bit darker and give a bit more shadow but also be more playful with the edge and lighting uh, around her because she's being lit up by her katana and energy shield so those are two of the things amongst many things that I would do differently and don't forget the finishing touches there's so many things you can do to a piece to make it that much better by adding things like you know, smoke rain puddles and various textures being playful with the brushes that you use all of that creates so much more atmosphere and makes it so much better you can even consider adding a bit of soft focus in certain areas and motion blur guiding the person towards certain areas of the picture you want them to focus on and that's pretty much a casual overview of the processes that i took to create this specific piece so remember the importance of research and references find out similar artwork that's relevant to you for your piece and also look up real world examples the composition of your piece the type of camera angles that work best for your characters the scene the mood of the story you're trying to tell and if you're modeling the background in 3d like i did then make sure you make it to scale and also make it convincing by relating it back to real world examples and when you're painting remember to make the environment look lived in and be playful with lighting and don't forget those finishing touches thank you so much for watching i never really had a chance to talk about the cerulean piece 
before so it's been quite fun to do so and I hope that if you do happen to be someone who's just started out entertaining the idea of creating digital art I hope this video has inspired you with the processes that I took that maybe if you followed them you could potentially create something similar like I did in those early days when I was doing it so I really do hope you found this video helpful and if you did please feel free to show your support by liking, commenting, subscribing to my channel and following me on my socials if you want to. Feel free to ask me any questions and until then I'll see you next time.